Hey guys, welcome back to Cruise Blog. This is Allie, and today we're going to be talking about cruise tips that sound like a good idea until you get on board. Let's get started. Prior to your cruise vacation, it's important to read about different tips and tricks that will help you have a better cruise experience. Some, however, sound better in theory than when you're actually implementing them. I've taken 10 cruises and have four more planned between now and November, so while I'm not a cruise pro, I have learned some things that help me maximize my time on board as well as save time and money. If someone swears that something works for them, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you. Everyone's different, especially when it comes to their idea of a perfect vacation. And at the end of the day, you need to do what will help you have the most memorable cruise. Sometimes those infamous money saving hacks are simply not worth it. So here are eight cruise tips that I've tried that did not work for me and my travel style. Number one is booking the cheapest cruise cabin to save money. Up until this year, I had only ever stayed in balcony cabins while cruising. It's important to establish your vacation budget and stick to it. However, booking the cabin that you actually want versus settling for the cheapest thing might impact how much you're enjoying your vacation. Personally, I love being able to wake up in the morning and enjoy time on my personal balcony rather than having to head somewhere else in the ship to get a view of the ocean. It makes for a peaceful start to my day. Adjusting to inside cabins, therefore, has been kind of difficult for me. Plus, inside cabins are often smaller than ocean view and balcony cabins, which already clock in less square footage than the average hotel room. If having space as well as access to natural light is important to you, you will not have a great time on your cruise vacation if you book the cheapest stateroom available. Likewise, if you select a guarantee cabin, you may be unhappy with where you end up being located. Do you want to be near the youth club or under a specific deck like the pool deck? If so, don't worry about saving money and just do what will make you the happiest during your vacation. Relying on an upgrade bid to be accepted might result in disappointment too. My next tip is trying to pack in a carry-on for a week-long cruise. Packing everything in a carry-on bag might seem feasible for some, but I enjoy having options when it comes to selecting my evening outfits. Having to re-wear dresses takes out the fun of it for me, as I love having an excuse to dress up a little bit nicer than normal. I'd rather pay to check a bag and be able to bring a little bit more clothing than I probably need rather than limiting myself. Of course, this is totally dependent on your travel style. A large suitcase may seem unreasonable for a lot of cruisers. I will say that you never know how much you're going to end up packing until you get going though. From daytime wear by the pool to clothing for adventures and ports and onboard activities and then having nicer evening wear, it adds up to be more than you think. My next tip is not buying a Wi-Fi package. Wi-Fi packages are not necessarily cheap. However, they are not the most expensive cruise add-ons either. They allow you to stay connected with your friends and family back home as well. Even if you like the idea of being disconnected, you never know when an emergency will arise and you'll want to ensure that someone has a way to get a hold of you. Just because you purchased an internet package does not mean that you have to be on your phone all day. There's no rule that says you cannot leave it behind in your stateroom while you're at the pool deck or eating dinner. In addition to emergencies on land, and internet makes daily life simply more convenient. Perhaps you want to check the weather forecast before disembarking the ship or need to pay a bill while on board and having Wi-Fi allows you to do those things. If you end up waiting until you get on the ship to get Wi-Fi, you will probably end up paying more than if you had pre-purchased it in advance as some cruise lines offer really good discounts when you can get it online via their platform prior to departure. Next is packing a swimsuit in my carry-on bag. I always pack a swimsuit in my carry-on bag on embarkation day and to this day, however, I I have yet to swim on the first day. There are so many other things to do from grabbing something to eat, making dining and show reservations, exploring the ship and getting excited for sail away with a cocktail in hand. And I just have never found the time to actually go in the pool. Plus, I don't want to have to worry about rushing to get ready for dinner after sailing away. If I'd been in the pool, I would want to shower and freshen up before dinner. Even though it doesn't take up much space, I'm probably going to stop worrying about making sure that I have a swimsuit in my bag. Next up is saving money by drinking in port. While it's true that alcoholic drinks are often much cheaper than those on the ship, I do not find drinking while in port to be a productive way to spend my day. Often there are other excursions that I'd rather do that are not centered around drinking. Sometimes I'll grab a drink or two if I'm on the beach. However, I would rather indulge while on the ship in the evenings during a show or dinner or while listening to live music. If I have too many drinks during the day, I will want to retire early that night. And I find that my favorite time on board is at night when the ship really comes alive. 
alive. My next tip, booking another cruise while on board. Many cruise lines offer those incentives to book your next cruise while on your current one. If you're certain that this is something you want to do, there is nothing wrong with speaking to an agent and getting more information. But personally, it is difficult for me to plan too many vacations in advance. In fact, the last cruise that I booked while on board, which was a little over one year away, I had to cancel due to unforeseen circumstances. After that, I told myself that I would give myself a little bit more time before rushing into any vacations that far in advance. On the the other hand, if you are still months out from your next cruise, you see another one that you want to book, it would behoove you to go ahead and secure that rate. The pricing may increase and offset any benefits that you would receive from booking it on the cruise. My next tip, eating at specialty restaurants for lunch. Another money saving tip that many veteran cruisers advise is to eat at specialty restaurants during lunch as sometimes they're cheaper than during dinner. And while this is true, I really don't like having larger meals during the middle of my day. The exception, however, would be specialty restaurants that are priced a la carte as I could order something small and pay less than a cover charge. Personally, I would rather pay the difference and dine at a specialty restaurant during dinner as I find that ambiance is also different. It does not feel as casual as when you're eating there for lunch. If it's your first or second cruise, you can still get the full cruising experience without splurging on specialty dining anyway. It is possible to board the ship and not pay anything extra for food, especially if you plan to eat before disembarking at ports of call. My last tip is staying on board the ship while docked in port. You may be considering staying on board the ship when docked for a few different reasons, whether it's because you've been there before, you didn't like a shore excursion, or you wanted to enjoy the ship's amenities with fewer crowds. Even if you do not have anything planned, you can always get off and walk around for a little bit. Don't be afraid to try local cuisine or wander into a few stores even. All right, everybody, those are my biggest cruise tips that sound like a good idea until you're on board. Comment below if you agree with me on any of these. I know a few of them might be controversial, but this is just me and my travel style. Be sure to like and subscribe to Cruise Blog so you can be notified every time we have a new video. Until next time, happy cruising, everybody, and thanks for tuning in.